Welcome back. I hope you guys all had a fantastic week. I know I did and I wanted to share some results that I've been hearing from you guys and some results that I've had and then I've got a whole bunch of stuff that I want to do in this video today. So let's start out with what I experienced this week and that is I lost three and a half pounds which I know weight is not what it's all about but it still is nice to see that scale move. I did feel some fluid loss. I uh, spent more time than usual in the bathroom on Tuesday and that was just my system flushing out all those extra that as I mentioned I was doing more heavy meat ketovore which is keto plus carnivore and I had some family in from out of town so I may have had a couple of glasses as a wine things like that so it was so nice for my body to kind of get rid of all that excess fluid and it felt really amazing also noticed that my knees are feeling much better and that is something I can tell the minute I step out of bed in the morning and I appreciate that so much and for some of you, you are also experiencing this great fluid loss. And thanks to Carolyn and Joy for letting us know. Mama Bear is an experienced carnivore and has been giving us lots of comments on suggestions. So thanks for all the comments. I really appreciate that. And that is why we're doing this together. For today's video, instead of giving you more tips, because I feel like I gave you a lot in my last video, which I will link in the description box below, but make sure you go back and read that. Now that you've been doing this for a week, go back, look at some of those. You'll be like, oh yeah, she said if I'm feeling this, maybe I should try this. So I think that video will still help you out and you probably can refer back to it as needed throughout this journey. Today's video, I wanted to instead talk a little bit more about what you can eat. Because at this stage, if you're just doing eggs and meat and some seafood, then you're probably like, hmm, it's a little boring. <laughs> and I get that. As I mentioned in a previous video, I need a little bit more variety. My husband can eat the same thing every day and be happy. By the way, he also lost four pounds. He is very excited, says he looks fantastic. So my husband is a very funny guy and you will meet him in one of the future videos. He did help me prepare a lot of the video that I'm showing you of the foods that we prepared, but it was really just our hands in a lot of it because I just kept my camera out and said, oh, we're making this tonight. I should show my fellow carnivore challenge viewers what we are eating. And so that's what we did for a lot of the week. My camera was always out, always ready to capture what we were up to. And I did a ton of meal prep because that's what helps me a lot. If I can open my fridge and there be like four or five things that I can pick, then that is way better for me than if I'm looking in the fridge and going, hmm, what can I make? If I can have some things that are already there, already prepared, I am much better off. And so when I get those spurts of energy, which I don't think I've mentioned that yet, but as of Wednesday, I got such a spurt of energy. And sometimes you'll get that as you get more fat adapted. And I'll talk a little bit about that, but I got it on Wednesday cleaned my basement which whoever cleans their basement nobody goes down there we have an unfinished basement so even less of a reason to clean it but i do go down there and i just decided that it was time to spruce it up down there move some things around love the energy spurts that you get and you're going to continue to feel more and more energy on this planet a lot of people talk about how much energy they have on carnivore now some of you may not be feeling energy yet Keep in mind, this is the first week, so some of you may not get fat adapted in the first week. In fact, most people take several weeks to get fat adapted. In my case, I was carnivore for a full year plus a couple months, and then I did keto vor for about the last three months. And now uh, for a week, I am full blown non cheating carnivore. <laughs> some people, it takes up to six months sometimes to get fat adapted and it just truly depends on what you have going on in your system and how much you were on more of the standard american diet or another diet where your body has a lot of healing to do like if you were whole food plant-based or 
vegetarian, vegan, whatever the case may be, some of those, your body really has to do a lot of like, whoa, we are completely doing something different and it needs to kind of adapt to that. Also, if you have a lot of health issues that you need to address and work on, your body is working on that in the background. While you may not be fat adapted, but you're still healing. And so you'll see a lot of other non-scale victories that you'll see throughout this. And hopefully you hit some of those this week. But if you haven't, if you're still feeling eh, not so great, not a lot of energy, maybe still a lingering headache from your body just trying to, number one, get rid of all the carbs and glucose in your body, and two, trying to balance those electrolytes, that's why it's really great for you to make sure that you're drinking enough. Now, I did read a comment last week where a woman was drinking two gallons of water a day, not on my channel, but on another channel, and that will also disrupt your electrolytes. So we're trying to balance our electrolytes. So we do wanna drink water because we are losing fluid right now. And so we want to replenish that water and drink enough. You know, we don't want to be dehydrated on this plan, that's for sure. But we also don't want to be drinking gallons of water. We want to be drinking enough water. And that's very individual. So if some people can drink a lot of water, and if you've always drank a lot of water, then you can probably continue to do that. But if you tend to forget to drink throughout the day, this is a time where you want to maybe set yourself some reminders and just be drinking again in between meals and then add those electrolytes powders there's element people call it element but it's l m n t that is my favorite brand there's also keto chow there's a whole sort of different electrolyte powder supplements that you can put right into your water or into your coffee or tea whatever you're drinking if you've decided to keep those beverages in your diet. And there's also supplements where you can take a pill form of the magnesium, potassium, and salt. Again, salt everything, and that really, really helps, especially with the loss of fluids. There was Mama Bear, one of the people in our challenge. She's actually a seasoned carnivore and has lots of great things to say. So look at her comments in the comments on my YouTube channel. And she's got lots of great things, lots of great tips. But one of the tips she had is instead of buying Element or Keto Chow or any of the electrolyte supplements, she said you can make your own. And that is true. And I'll put a recipe in the description box below because it can be a little bit cheaper to do it yourself. And she gave us a recipe for that also in the comments, but I've also seen other recipes, so we'll make sure to include those as well. So again, get those electrolytes. Your body's trying to figure out what your electrolyte balance needs to look like now that you've cut out the carbs. So help it out a little bit and make sure that those electrolytes are happening so that you don't feel sluggish, so that you don't have as much headaches, and it also reduces the cravings for you as well. Before we get going, I wanted to also give you another tip. Because we're going into week two, I wanted to remind you that while in week one I suggested you stay to three meals a day, you may want to bring that down to two meals a day this week. It is certainly not necessary, and I do eat three meals a day, so it's definitely not something you ever need to do. But a lot of people, because you are starting to feel a lot less hungry, you may want to cut your meals down to two per day and eat when you're truly hungry. But you do need to make sure you're getting your appropriate protein and fat in. I will also link below all my videos that I've done prior on the carnivore challenge and in one of those videos I talk about what your protein and fat amounts should look like. So make sure that you are getting that protein minimum as a base because you need that for everything that your body does. And then again we're using fat for fuel instead of carbs for fuel. And so you'll need to make sure that you're getting enough fat in so that your body has enough to fuel your body. If you're feeling hungry this week or next week, it's important that you eat more fat. Some people are like, what does that mean? Like, do I just guzzle fat down? No, it doesn't mean that. And there are plenty of people that eat butter and sticks of butter. I don't particularly do that. I, I love butter, but I don't love to just 
chew it and eat it. I like to put it in things. I love lots of butter in my eggs. If I have a lean piece of steak, like sometimes we'll have top sirloin, which isn't my favorite because it's really not fatty enough for me, but my husband prefers top sirloin. So we kind of go back and forth between ribeye and top sirloin. And I'll put butter on my top sirloin just to give it a little bit more fat. Also, egg yolks have a good source of fat in there. And so sometimes when I'm making a couple eggs, I'll throw a couple extra egg yolks in there and that just boosts that fat intake. You can put egg yolks on a lot of things that actually you can use it almost as a sauce. It tastes great. Also, some people use hard boiled eggs, the, the yolks from that, and they just shred it on top of things just to give it a little bit of color and a little bit of extra fat. Sprinkle that on top of whatever it is you're eating and I think that that will also help you with your fats. And then the last thing would be to add salmon as a side dish to more of your meals so that you can get some of that healthy omega-3 fat as well. As I mentioned before, some of you may not yet be fat adapted and that's okay but I did wanna give you some ways that you'll know that you're fat adapted. That will be that energy that I mentioned before. When your energy starts to increase and your brain fog starts to lift. And one weird thing is your breath may smell different. It has more of a metallic different smell when you're in ketosis. If you actually test your ketones, the best way to do that is through a blood test where you prick your finger and there's something called Keto Mojo. There's several different types that you can use. I use Keto Mojo. I used to be all consumed with ketosis and what my ketones look like. Now I know that I'm always in some version of ketosis when I'm on carnivore. I'm never very high in ketosis, which is why my fat loss is a little bit slower than others. So if you want to test for ketones, that's fine. Anything over 0.2 is actually ketosis. I am usually right, hovering right around 0 0.3, 0 0.4, but there are people that go into the one or, or even two if for ketosis. So if that's you, fantastic. You probably do a little bit better than some others of us, but in either case, don't chase the ketones. Don't take external ketones. Those are not really great for you. They may make you feel a little bit better from a brain fog perspective, but it really isn't helping your body determine how best to create ketones out of the fat that you have in your body and out of the fat that you're eating as well. So not a great idea to eat those exogenous ketones is what they're called. As a reminder, if you have any questions throughout this process, please put it in the comment section below and I am answering all my comments. I also have an email address that's in the description box below. It's gentasticjourney at gmail.com. And also, so if you have a personal question that you really don't wanna put out in the public, certainly ask me a question there and I will respond as well. I'm looking at my comments on a daily basis, so I will get back to you usually same day. And I appreciate those comments so much. I love to hear how you guys are doing, anything you have to say, I love to hear it. So keep me posted on your progress and I will be sure to answer any questions. One other thing I wanted to mention is make sure you're still watching all those other doctors on YouTube that are carnivores. I follow Dr. Benjamin Bickman. I love his research. He is a scientist, so he's not a, you know, a doctor that sees patients. He is a doctor that researches and he's dedicated his entire career to researching and studying insulin resistance and how that impacts all the different things in your body. And he wrote a really good book, Why We Get Sick. I'll link to it in the description box below. It's by Dr. Benjamin Bickman. And I'm reading that right now, and I'm just fascinated by his research, and it has me more convinced than ever that this way of eating is exactly what my body needs, and it's going to keep me healthy, and it's going to keep a lot of those illnesses that it seems like the entire population is fighting at bay, and I am so thankful for his research and the easy way that he explains it to people like me that I'm not a scientist, I'm not a doctor, and yet it, he makes it super easy to understand. So check out Dr. Ben Bickman. He has lots of YouTube videos and he does a lot of little small 
snippets of information. So if you're looking for something specific to you, maybe an ailment that you have, an autoimmune disease, heart disease, whatever your particular issue may be, he usually has a video on it and how insulin resistance is impacting that disease. Okay, I'm gonna stop talking. We're gonna get to our food videos and I hope you enjoy this. Let me know if you wanna see more tips or if you wanna see more food videos and I'll try and keep it interesting and keep us all moving in the right direction. Let's get started with some of those recipes. So while eggs and meat and seafood, as I said, can be fantastic for you, it can get a little boring. My husband and I have tons of recipes for you and they are meat and egg based. So they're definitely carnivore. Again, it's going to be mostly me and my husband's hands as we're preparing things or I also show you all the food prep that I did that's in my refrigerator. So let's get to that and I will stop talking your ear off. Let's go. So a quick look into my refrigerator and you'll see lots of pre-prepared foods. As I mentioned, I need to look in here and find my meals. So you'll see that I have some of those meat crisps that, we, that we're gonna make the recipe for. This is dog food that I make for my dogs. They are also primarily carnivores. This is uh, just a container of made bacon because who, who doesn't love bacon? I've got some butter. I've got a little bit of Asiago cheese as more of a add-on. This is my husband's breakfast, which is some eggs with some pot roast. These are some steaks that we've thawed for tonight's dinner. My husband makes the best meatballs and there will be a recipe coming up soon. It may be a short or it may be in the next video. These are some sausages, very clean sausages that I cooked in advance in the air fryer. And then this is the pot roast that you saw in those eggs. And I just slow cooked this in the slow cooker and it's just regular pot roast meat, which I think is chuck. Usually chuck roast is what's pot roast. And then I have a drawer full of cheeses. My husband can do cheese. I cannot do cheese. And then in the bottom, which uh, that's all of our kind of processed meats, but there are definitely some good processed meats that have clean ingredients, no sugar. And then of course we've got our eggs because that's a big part of our carnivore journey. And for those of you that can tolerate it, it's great. I am going to show you how to make the most delicious eggs you've ever eaten. And this is a recipe that is actually more of a technique and it's called French eggs. And I've made this for years, but this is one of the things on carnivore that keeps me super happy. And I make this very often for breakfast or my at least my first meal of the day, which sometimes is around 11. I put in a cold pan, two tablespoons of butter and three eggs. And I am going to very slowly on low temperature heat these eggs up. So since I have an electric stove, I am putting this on temperature two. You could put anywhere from two to four, depending on your stove. If you have a gas stove, again, low temperature would be perfect for this. And this is a technique that requires a little bit of patience. So from start to finish, I believe this takes about four minutes because I did have the clock in the camera for a while there, but I've zoomed this in a little bit and I'm going to speed this up because you do not need me to see me do this but just to tell you what that technique is so you keep it on low you get everything in there cold and then you whisk and whisk and whisk so we'll call this a wrist workout as well <laughs> but you're going to just keep whisking it the whole time while it's on low you'll soon see and I'm going to speed this up significantly but again it took me three full minutes before I started to see anything happening and what you're going to look for is some curdling of the the egg. So you want to make sure that you're moving it around, moving it around because you need everything to stay kind of at a similar temperature. And then once it starts to curdle and it'll look a little bit like large curd cottage cheese, then you'll want to just keep moving that around and keeping everything off the bottom. So we're going to speed this up, warp speed, and just keep in mind it took about three minutes. So this is not for those people that are super impatient and just want some scrambled eggs. This is a moist, delicious version of scrambled eggs. Now as a carnivore, eggs become one of the staples, right? So it's important to make sure that you learn several different techniques with eggs so that you can keep it exciting. And for me, this is my go-to method. 
it's creamy, it's very moist, I don't feel like it's rubbery, and I love to put these eggs with something. So I'll just cut up whatever I have, and I have several pictures of meals that I had this week that I'm going to show you because eggs fill in the gaps of the amino acid profile of meats. So meats are such a nutrient dense food, but when you add eggs to your daily food intake, it fills in any of the gaps that meat alone doesn't have. Here you can see I'm starting to rush and make sure I'm gonna turn the temperature down or off in this case. And you just wanna keep whisking, whisking, whisking so that things don't get too dried at the bottom, but you wanna just keep them off so then I pick it up because it's starting to get cooked and I don't like anything undercooked when it comes to eggs. So I'm just gonna keep moving that around, making sure that they stay nice and moist. So next I'm going to show you some awesome pictures of some of my meals from this week. So let's get to that. Okay, so this is a picture of eggs with pot roast. These are some carnivore bagels that I made and I will show you how to do that with some ground meat. And then also I had some with my ribeye crisps as well. Next, I'm going to show you how to make the carnivore ribeye chips or crisps. They are similar to the carnivore crisps you can buy, which are crazy, crazy expensive, like $40 for six or so ounces. This, I buy this very thin cut meat from Costco. They call it Beef Loin New York, and it's shabu shabu, which I believe is the technique for cutting it. I'm also going to use this Redmond's Real Salt. It's a smoked salt and then also just some regular Redmond's Real Salt. Those are my two favorite salts and I keep that salt in my salt shaker. So I'm going, you can do this a couple of ways. I am going to make this in my dehydrator. You can do any kind of meats in your dehydrator and they just turn out a little bit like jerky, but because these are so thin cut they are actually they come out fantastic with a very crispy texture so the thinner you can make it the better so i am going to put this at 180 degrees and i am starting it at six hours now if you look up recipes it does suggest that you put this in for six hours i find that because this is so thinly cut that i do not need this to be in there for six hours for me three three and a half hours is a perfect amount you just want to make sure you'll see like in the first hour it's really going to start to cook and then from there you'll flip it over once in between so I usually let it go for a good hour hour and a half and then I flip it over I actually take and this is going to be sad for some of us because we're trying to keep our fats up but you do kind of get some of the juices off so I put it on some paper towel then flip it over and let the other side dehydrate as well. And then as soon as you see it to be as crispy as you want it, obviously the longer you put it in there, the crispier it gets. And a lot of the recipes say you can keep this in an air tight container to store for a week. I put it in the refrigerator because I just don't feel comfortable not putting things in the refrigerator uh, that don't have any preservatives on them. And these certainly don't have preservatives. I am going to place this in the bottom of this air fryer pan. This is a Ninja and it does a whole bunch of different things. I predominantly use it for, as an air fryer, but it also has a dehydrator. And so I'm gonna put this in the Ninja, in this case, the dehydrator. You may want to spray the bottom of your pan or rub it with some butter or with some beef tallow. The other method you can use is do the same thing and you can do a much larger quantity and put it into the oven. You can do the same thing, put it at a very low temperature, around 180 degrees, and you would put it in for an hour and a half, flip it over and put it in for another hour and a half, or as long as you like the crispiness to be. Again, if you're gonna make this a little bit thicker, it'll come out more like jerky the thicker it is. This comes out very crispy. Okay, so I've put these all in the pan. I am going to sprinkle some of that Redmond's Real Salt on there and also put a pinch of the Redmond's Smoked Salt on there as well. Just gives it some additional flavor. That is something that we all like. I don't mind salt and because I've been on carnivore for a period of time, you get more used to or adjusted to salt. Salt it to taste. This is nothing that's required for the recipe. You just want to take a pinch of this and just sprinkle it on and give it a little bit more flavor. The smoke flavor is good if you like that flavor. Redmond's Real Salt has several different 
types of salts. So you should go on their website and check that out. They have some really good stuff. So I make this in this air fryer instead of in my oven because I don't like to heat my house in the summer and it is summer out by us. And so I'm going to stick this in here and make this smaller batch because we eat this like crazy. And if I have too much of it, we just kind of gobble it all down unnecessarily. So this is more of a side for us. If I'm going to have some shrimp, I'll put a few pieces of this. Or if I don't have breakfast or lunch and I just need to add a little bit more protein to my meals, then I will add this. So this is what it looks like after an hour and a half or so. And then you flip it over. So I'm going to take it out and I'm going to press out some of those oils on there. I'm just going to put this on some of these paper towels so that we can get some of the fat and juices off of there because it does allow it to crisp up a little bit when you do that. Again, this is more of a snack for us than anything else and something more like a side dish for us or a side, not even a dish, just a, <laughs> something to add on the side of your plate so it looks a little bit more interesting than just one item on your plate. This is also good. We went to the train museum with two of our grandsons this weekend. We were able to bring these in little baggies and we had that for our lunch while they ate their lunch and so that was fun for a picnic lunch. So here they are ready and I am going to take them out and you can see they are nice and crisp. They're staying completely solid so they do not act like jerky. They actually act more like crisp and then I let this cool. It's more like a bacon consistency and it tastes really good. Of course I had to try that little piece there <laughs> but I'm going to let this cool off and then I'm going to put it in one of my glass containers and then I stick it in the fridge and it seems to be fine. If you want to crisp it back up, you can always throw it back in the air fryer for a couple of minutes or a couple of seconds actually, and you should be good to go. But that is how I make that. And here's my little glass container that I'm putting it in. And that just makes a great side dish or snack. Try this out. You will not be disappointed. My husband and I just love this. Thanks for joining me today, and I hope you appreciate some of these food techniques. I hope they make your food journey just a little bit easier in this carnivore way of eating. Don't forget to click the like button if you enjoyed this, and also subscribe to my channel and share this out to anyone else who you think might need this way of eating. I look forward to seeing you next Monday for another week three update. Send me those comments and questions or emails, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Have a great week.